Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Aquarius Habitat. This is a Aquarius is a underwater habitat, 43 feet long, which is located four miles offshore, Tavernier, Florida, and is, houses scientists underwater for projects of 10-day duration. Uh, the seafloor is 60 feet underwater, and storage depth, or the internal pressure in the habitat, is uh, 47 feet of seawater. We house four scientists at a time, along with uh, two technicians on missions of uh, 10 days duration, uh, generally, and they get to spend hours and hours every day, about eight or nine hours a day, on the seafloor doing marine science research. The structure weighs, uh, the habitat itself is 80 tons, it's a 120 ton base plate, and supported by a buoy overhead. And that buoy provides air and electricity, as well as communications with the outside world. So today we're going to be talking about ocean acidification and a specific project taking place in Aquarius at this time. Um, on this call, there is a conference call which is being patched in via Ustream, which you guys are now watching. On this call, you'll have myself, Saul Rosser, the Operations Director at Aquarius to Face. Hopefully we'll also have Dr. Gary Miller, the Chancellor at UNCW. Um, hopefully he'll be able to join us in the next few minutes. We also have Dr. Chris Martins the principal investigator for this mission from University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, and Dr. Libby Jewett, um, director of NOAA's Ocean Acidification Program. Finally, and uh, quite excitingly, we have James Talisak, the lead habitat technician during this mission, and currently a diver in the water, um, who we'll be talking with. Okay, if you guys are on Ustream, which uh, if you're watching this, you obviously are, you'll notice that there are, there's both a, a viewing uh, area where you can see live videos, which we're sending to you and selecting between. You'll also see on the right-hand side there is something called Social Stream. You can use Social Stream to ask questions during this event. You can log in directly to Social Stream via Ustream, or you can use your Facebook account. So please go ahead and log in if you'd like to ask some questions. When you do ask questions, let me ask you to please identify yourself and identify uh, where, you're, uh, where you are working or where you are stationed, where you are emailing from. Um, so hopefully we'll get a good dialogue going in a bit. During this event, and if Dom, if you can show us, uh, we have a couple of different uh, camera feeds available. We have the diver's hat camera, um, which perhaps Dom can switch to. In a second here, we also have a, road, a camera on the reef, which Dom has gone back and forth between. It's a rotating camera. We also have a fixed camera, which shows the diver and some of the equipment. And we have a camera inside the galley table showing Dr. Martin. Um, there's a few other cameras that Dom might show during this event. And um, just want to give you a sense as you jump around between these various feeds, what you might be looking at. So hopefully you can follow along as we move through. Uh, one other note for this event, uh, we are in the middle of live operations. We do have a diver in the water and are using this channel for dive control pr uh, purposes. So you may hear us break in with uh, calls of green diver, green diver, or the diver calling back for topside support. Uh, so please bear with us as it occurs. You may also hear VHF radio or other traffic in the background as operations continue. Okay, that's the intro um, in terms of the program. We're going to last about 30 minutes here going until 2.30. At this time, I want to check one more time to see if uh, Dr. Miller, Chancellor at UNCW, is on the line. Dr. Miller, have you had a chance to join us? I'm, I'm here with you. It's a great pleasure. Oh, great. Thank you for joining us, joining us, Dr. Miller. I understand you wanted to say a few words about Aquarius and how it fits into the larger picture for UNCW, NOAA, and the ocean science community. Thank you, Saul. That's, uh, this is a great opportunity for us. A very exciting event today to showcase the capabilities of but we think it's one of the world's most advanced marine assets in operation today. Wilmington is North Carolina's coastal university, and the university has been operating Aquarius Undersea Laboratory for NOAA since 1991. And uh, Aquarius and its complement this complements the university's broader mission to increase knowledge and cultivate public awareness about the oceans and seas and marine science in general through our research education. I'm very excited. I'm a biologist by training, so this is very exciting to me. The value of this project uh, as uh, currently being undertaken by Chris Mer Martins really can't be overstated. Aquarius is located on a uh, reef off uh, Key Largo, has been there for almost 20 years, giving scientists the opportunity to Studies. Additionally, scientists uh, utilizing 
Aquarius have 24-hour access, 10 hours a day in the bottom, and sometimes uh, to a depth of 100 feet. This is fantastic, we believe. This, along with the power of the networking capabilities afforded uh, by the Undersea Laboratory, is, is, we believe, one of the major reasons it's such an important asset for understanding the ocean. So we're looking forward to our collaboration as we explore ways to expand the Aquarius Reef Base uh, research. And to research. So we thank you all for joining us, and we're very excited to hear more about Dr. Martin's uh, work. Thank you very much, Paul. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Miller. Um, at this time, we'll turn to Libby Jewett, Dr. Libby Jewett, at the NOAA's Ocean Acidification Program. Libby, are you on the line? I am. Okay, would you like to go ahead and give us a little sense of perspective uh, from NOAA? So I just have some very quick comments because I think the important thing is to to um, be able to see what Chris is doing uh, from the Aquarius. But on behalf of NOAA, I want to welcome all who are tuning in to this live broadcast. Um, and as director of NOAA's newly established ocean acidification program, I'm excited to be participating in this interactive event with Chris Martin and his team of researchers. As you'll hear, ocean acidification poses a very serious threat to coral reefs around the world. And NOAA is responsible for developing a comprehensive coral reef monitoring network to gauge the impact of acidification on these critical marine habitats and assist in their management. Dr. Martin's work will help inform the structure of this network. And I especially look forward to hearing and seeing more about his work and hearing questions from those of you listening. I also want to open the opportunity and, and um, reach out to any of you who are on the line. Um, if you're interested in learning more about NOAA's comprehensive approach to ocean acidification research, please feel free to contact me anytime after the event today. And now I believe we have a video um, introducing Dr. Martin's research. Aquarius Underwater Habitat is an 88-ton uh, school bus, if you want. Okay, Dom, I just think you have a video available that Chris recorded base base prior to the mission. Um, when you're ready, go to play. Anchored down. Think of it as a submarine without wheels uh, down on the seafloor. If you want to live out on a reef and work for many hours in the day, the best way to do it is to saturate. That is to dive down, actually equilibrate with the surrounding environment, including pressure, temperature, and all the rest of that. Uh, stay down. Uh, it's much safer to stay down. You don't have to deal with problems with your ears, uh, uh, decompression and recompression. Uh, you don't, in other words, have to do bounce diving. And so you're living in the environment, you come to equilibrium with it, and it's possible to work as much as 10 hours a day or more out on the reef. Our group is working with uh, advanced instrumentation to try to distinguish this global ocean acidification effect from acidification that occurs as a result of local processes. For example, as water washes across the reef from offshore and from nearshore, there's all kinds of changes in the acidity. How is a reef manager going to distinguish between local variations in ocean acidity and that which is coming as a result of global uh, CO2 increases? So we're trying to learn how to distinguish between those two sources of acid. Uh, we've got uh, most of our experiments are oriented towards working in the benthic environment, that is right on the seafloor, where there are lots of organisms that generate CO2. Sponges, for example, they breathe just like we do. They take in oxygen, they exhale CO2, they just exhale it into the water column. So we're trying to distinguish between that source of acidity and the global source of acidity. Aquarius uh, uh, reef base as a whole has two features that are really important to us. One is we can safely live there because of the support team that's backing us up and because of the facility itself that's well maintained. It also has power and communications capabilities. We're actually able to watch our instruments produce data real time, both in Aquarius, uh, back on shore here. In fact, you can see data coming off our instruments back at some of the companies we work with, for example, in Norway. So it's a very special situation in which we can do high-tech experiments 
under very safe conditions in an environment that's normally alien to human beings. Our work fits into efforts that are going on around the world now to understand the potential impacts of ocean acidification. Uh, the way it fits in is that most workers that are working on this problem have to work in laboratories, for example, with organisms in aquaria. Uh, or, for example, they simulate experiments and do modeling efforts. Or they lower ropes over the uh, wires over the side with instruments on them to get glimpses of what's going on. Our work is actually designed to make real-time measurements for extended periods of time on the seafloor, surrounded by a coral reef environment. We're now going to go down to the habitat where Dr. Martins is sitting at our galley table, and he will introduce our diver in the water. So, Chris, if you can hear me, over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Chris Martins down in the habitat. Uh, I'm down here with uh, Professor Niels Lindquist, Howard Mendelowitz, and Dan Herr who are my partners in this research program, along with uh, Ryan and James, the Habtechs. At any rate, uh, we're going to go straight out to James Talachek, who's out on the reef uh, diving. Remember that our central question is, how can we distinguish the effects of pH drop from global atmospheric CO2 injection from local CO2 injection? You're going to see some instruments out on the reef. Many of them are prototype instruments. We're partnering with a bunch of private sector companies, about four of them at the present time, and you'll see their instruments. Many of them are brand new. So let's go out to the seafloor. Hello, James. Are you there? Yes, Chris. I am with you. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, so we've, we're, there we're looking at James. Uh, his helmet cam is going to allow us to, to, to take a direct look at some of the state-of-the-art instruments. Many of them, there's less of 10 of them in the world. This one you're looking at right now, it's called a Seas 2. Uh, there's about 10 of them in the world, and they are the most sophisticated underwater pH measurement equipment that currently exists. You'll see a little pump flying around. They're basically underwater auto analyzers. You have to do it very carefully in order. These are capable of resolving plus or minus 0 0.001 pH units. So they're very good. We're able to use them to continuously monitor pH on the seafloor, in the water column above the seafloor. Uh, we're particularly interested in what the pH is, that is, the acidity, right against the substrate, right against the coral surfaces, the reef rubble surfaces, sponge surfaces. So if we can go back to James, let's move from the Seas 2 instrument over to our underwater mass spectrometer. Uh, off to the left there, uh, James is going to take a quick stroll. And you're looking at one of only five working underwater mass spectrometers currently um, working around in the ocean. It's made by Monitor Instruments Company, uh, who we're partnering with on its battery case on the upper right-hand side so that we can unplug it underwater, walk around with it, little valve switch device on the left. But inside the case is an instrument that used to be the size of a Volkswagen, and now compressed down using modern electronics. And we can use that instrument to measure dissolved gases, in particular CO2, dissolved CO2. For this mission, that's the most important one. We also measure oxygen, argon, uh, any other gas that's of interest to us from the standpoint of its impact on oceanic uh, pH levels. That instrument uh, is capable of uh, going for months at a time. You see the cable off to the right trailing down to the lower right side of the picture. That takes us up to the LSB, the power source. We can then send that signal anywhere in the world, or we can uh, see it right here in the HAB. So we're actually uh, monitoring and looking at our instruments. They report to us live either here or at laboratories in UNC Wilmington or UNC Chapel Hill, any place we want to send a signal. So for monitoring purposes, this kind of instrumentation is the wave of the future. And I think of uh, Aquarius Reef Space as the world's only underwater cabled observatory. It's a marvelous place to do this kind of work, and that's why we're here. So if we go a little bit to the left, you're going to see uh, an experiment that's uh, uh, at the end of those wires. So let's let uh, James walk around uh, on the seafloor. It's quite a current blowing down there today. James, are you feeling any uh, heavy currents, or has it backed off a little bit? There's a, uh, quite a strong current today, Chris. Okay. So let's switch back to the helmet cam with James, and let's look at all those little blue objects hanging there like mangoes on a tree. Uh, those are little oxygen optodes. They are the latest and greatest measurement sensor for dissolved oxygen in seawater. They're very stable. Those very sensors have been out on the seafloor here at Aquarius Reef Base since 
uh, April. Uh, last year, we did a similar three-month trial experiment. We were able to continuously measure within seconds up to 15 or even more of those uh, sensors so we can have them placed around the reef. And what we're really, of course, using them for is to distinguish uh, drops in oxygen, which then are a result of respiration, which is injecting CO2 into the water and acidifying the water locally. Just below the optodes, you can see in yellow, uh, marking that's, a, that's actually a tank strap that we use. This is serial number two instrument from Satlantic. They've loaned it to us for these tests here at Aquarius. That instrument is uh, one of the most sophisticated for measuring pH in the world. And another one off to the left of it in the blue straps is also uh, the twin. That's number three. So this company's put a lot of faith in us. I'm happy to tell you that we've got really great results. We're able to carry those around on the reef and actually measure pH drops from specific seafloor organisms such as sponges. If we look a little bit to the left of that, we see some seabird CTDs, that is conductivity temperature, also have dissolved oxygen sensors on board the system. They are pumped systems, so they take a sample every two minutes or so. They're for long-term deployments. 